Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Agis Papantoniou, and I'm quite fortunate in my last presentation to have more than 10 minutes. So I will, um, I'm the senior project manager of Enfos, uh, the company, the, one of the contractors behind ESCO, and I will guide you um, to natural language processing techniques today that we used and we would like also to use more within uh, the ESCO project. So in short, what is uh, natural language processing is a discipline or a field that combines computer science, linguistics and artificial intelligence. Basically, it wants to enable a machine to understand our human language. So, yes, indeed, this is quite ambitious. We tried to be uh, pragmatic and we tried to see by uh, making up a, a demonstration, a small application, how such techniques of artificial intelligence could provide some value uh, of the ESCO V0 taxonomy as it is now. So basically, uh, we wanted to see the future steps on how we could improve ESCO taxonomy itself through an automated or semi-automated way. So as I said, we came up with a demo application that I'm going to show you in a few minutes that uh, will try to automatically match or provide, let's say, a first step towards automatically matching CVs and job vacancies. How is it going to do that? It will try to uh, compare and match ESCO concepts of the taxonomy within the text found in the documents. So, what uh, the first challenge, there were two challenges actually, the first challenge being that we uh, realized that at this moment the SCOV0 taxonomy lacked a big number of synonyms, the so-called non-preferred terms or NPTs. So we tried to come up, uh, to think and come up with a quick solution on how we could enrich this, uh, the SCOV0 taxonomy with NPTs and see if um, uh, it can provide any value. So. We did an experiment, and I don't know uh, how many of uh, you know WordNet, but WordNet is possibly the largest uh, at this moment uh, lexical database in English, but in other languages as we are going to see. It's a Princeton University initiative quite a long time now, and it groups words in synonyms based on their meaning. It is a very active community, already supporting many, many more languages like French, German, um, Italian, Spanish, uh, Chinese, Arabic. The second challenge was to try to see what is the value of ESCO. And um, we tried to be a little bit innovative here because okay, innovation is something really good in our lives. So the question was, where could we find some modern and pragmatic labor market terms to see if the ESCO taxonomy concepts can be matched to them. So we realized that there might be some documents that exist out there in the market that are pragmatic and are more than 200,000 job posts of LinkedIn. So what we tried to do, we tried to um, make the ESCO taxonomy, let's say, talk in some way with a job post or a job vacancy of LinkedIn and see if there can be any related terms found out of the ESCO taxonomy in this uh, job post document of LinkedIn. Um, how we did that, how we came up first of all with the WordNet NPTs, basically we followed two approaches. First, we searched WordNet, the lexical uh, database, with the ESCO preferred terms themselves. For example, ESCO um, has a preferred term which is called Member of Parliament, and WordNet gives an answer, yes, for me, Member of Parliament is called Parliamentarian. So we came up with synonyms in that way. The second issue is, uh, for example, if a preferred term is Tourism Manager, we split the words in two, and we came up with synonyms for every word of these two, and then we combined. So we came up, as you see, with quite a lot of synonyms automatically out of WordNet. The results were quite impressive. First of all, we saw 
that out of the around 5,000 occupations already in the ESCO V0 taxonomy, almost four of them, 4,000, sorry, of them, uh, already had non-preferred terms, synonyms in uh, WordNet, which exceeded 100,000. And the same applied also for other pillars. Um, okay, this is um, a little bit techy stuff, but for those who might know some technology, we used uh, the open source state of the art text engineering environment, which is called Gate. And basically what we, what we did, we put uh, CVs and job vacancies in this uh, system. We enriched the system with WordNet non-preferred terms and the ESCO V0 taxonomy, and we did the experiment on whether these documents can be tagged annotated, marked up with ESCO terms. So, um, yes, it's demo time. We are going to uh, see a video on how this thing is being done and how the demo works. You can access uh, the demo from your tablets, from your smartphones, or from your PCs at nlp.escoportal.eu. The link will be shown. So first of all, we had to uh, register the application, the developers network. I took it quite quickly because it is not uh, so much relevant. So uh, nlp.escoportal.eu is uh, the link. And we come up to this uh, page. Basically, you can, we can upload a LinkedIn uh, URL, or we can choose a file from our PC and put it there and see what is going on. So, um, first, let's try to process a LinkedIn job post. So, a LinkedIn job post usually looks like that. Here we have the out uh, uh, those sales representative. It has a structure. It demands some uh, job requirements, then some skills, so on. It's a very typical job vacancy found in LinkedIn. Um, so, we copy the URL and we put it in the respective uh, tab, and then uh, we press the magic button. And now, what we have? In the middle, we have the original text from LinkedIn. It can be your CV. It can be a job vacancy from um, a job uh, employee or whatever. And we have occupations on the left side of the screen and skills on the right side of the screen that come from the ESCO taxonomy. This means that the ESCO concepts recognized and were matched with the text found in the CV or in the job vacancy here. As you see, there is quite some relevancy because the salesperson, which is the first occupation that has 95% of relevancy, is coming from ESCO and it is matched to the sales representative, which is found four times in the document. Also, there are some marketing skills that are needed, of course, for this job vacancy and so on. What you see here can be applied. Basically, we did long LinkedIn. LinkedIn doesn't have to do anything with ESCO, of course, but it is a pool of the input documents in order to test how this automatic matching of what exists out there of terms in the labor market can be done with the ESCO V0 taxonomy. What you can do now or later on, because this uh, application will stay there, you can put your CV and you can see what sort of occupations and skills the ESCO V0 taxonomy can identify directly and automatically out of your CV. Um, so this is a word file that uh, is a vacancy of an IT project manager. So occupations like director and IT project manager itself are, are already identified. Um, I, will, um, I will proceed a little bit because to the conclusions and the next steps, thank you. Um, the ESCO V0 taxonomy is already of a very serious added value because the ESCO V0 taxonomy can be used in order to start using some applications on top of it, like the matching of documents. And what are documents here? Job vacancies with CVs. Not only in the social media marketplace, but of course also in URES, because URES CVs. Um, 
This was a demo, and it is a demo. But I don't know if it will remain a demo. This is something that we will have to discuss also with the ESCO board and the maintenance committee and so on. But what was really impressive and was really useful for us, it showed us how we can have some future steps in ESCO taxonomy and ESCO content itself. First of all, it must leave the side of a demo and must provide some formal measurements of the outcomes because, okay, it works on quite a lot of occupations and job vacancies already, but we have to do some formal measurements of its output. The second thing is that despite there are already rules and quite intelligent algorithms, we already know what more improvement can be done there regarding the relevancy. Even though we have 95% relevancy, we want to reach 99.99 because 100% is perfection in this natural language processing world. Um, there are even more NPTs in WordNet, non-preferred terms, synonyms, that we can drag out and enrich the ESCO V0 taxonomy in a quite quick way. Uh, with a more social media sources can be harvested so that ESCO V0 can be enriched with synonyms. Um, yes, we saw that if we provide or if we try to get out nature codes or other sort of information of a job vacancy, we can have much more targeted matching. And if we split the documents in parts so that the computer understands that this part of the document describes uh, skills competencies, this part possibly describes some qualifications, and this part describes an occupation, then from unstructured information we go to semi-structured or to structured information, and fortunately machines help us quite a lot on that. Um, I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did the last uh, couple of months and uh, thank you very much and I would uh, very much appreciate your questions. Thank you very much. Right. I hope it wasn't too disturbing all the work we were doing on the sidelines but thank you very much for the presentation. Now, do we have any questions? Here we go, right at the front. <coughs> So, uh, Wilfried Boomgaard from uh, Belgium. So, I, I fully agree that uh, working with WordNet is a very good approach to, to find synonyms. But uh, seeing this second example, uh, not all synonyms of the, word, of the term manager is semantically, from the ESCO perspective, uh, a non-preferred term. So, I see the word coach I, I would not say it, this is a, a synonym in ESCO for, for managers. I guess it's, it's uh, another term, perhaps the same family, but not uh, a synonym. So I, I only ask, after this harvesting out of dictionaries, please have a, a double check, a validation check with your reference groups to see if they are really synonyms or perhaps lower terms, broader terms, uh, associated terms, etc. So we need a double check for that. Yes, I would like to comment on that. One moment, we'll just catch a couple of questions. I saw you nodding your head vigorously as he was speaking there. I'm Stefan Winston-Reed. I uh, just agree with uh, the previous comments because um, when you go deeper into uh, semantic analysis, you will see that uh, there are 100,000 of different problems leading into the next problems. And we know from building ontologies that the more complex an ontology gets, the less accurate it becomes. So uh, I think these are typical examples that you enrich your ontology with a lot of new terms and synonyms, but at the end, you end quite often with less accuracy in the results that you are um, getting. Very good, thank you. On that point, please. Yes, um, I'm very challenged with these questions, and I will answer. Uh, I completely agree with you that the um, uh, more complex the formalisms of the knowledge representation within, uh, within ontologies, then the less accuracy might occur. So, on the other hand, um, the matching and the best, let's say, semantic similarity from our experience and what we have seen, because we are in knowledge engineering quite a lot of years, comes from the synonyms themselves. 
So there are already semantic distance algorithms that we really want to apply to this demo and don't forget the word demo that shows the future, that we want to get the coach out of it. And something else, um, the coach was left there because it is um, pragmatic, it is raw, it is what it is at this moment, the 23rd of October, with ESCO V0 having these preferred terms and these NPTs. What we wanted to showcase is the future. It's the future in the sense of that we know that technology is there, technology can help us. We know that the reference groups are doing quite very interesting work, and they will come with preferred terms that we will immediately come with non-preferred terms, and we will show them all these non-preferred terms, and possibly they will start reviewing and saying, yes, coach, not coach, yes. So, Having a lot of information already indexed in the machines helps the machines rather than not having information at all. And this basically is the point, one of the points of the demo. And again, one second point is to show that technology, yes, in the future of ESCO, is it going to be near or long term, this is a matter of decision, can help building applications on top of it. But overall, I completely agree with you. And it's quite nice that these questions are here. All right. Do we have some more questions? I realize it's been a really long day. <laughs> Thank you very much. Here at the back. Hello. Christian Guten, uh, Ritz School of Arts. How do you deal with multilingual uh, text in a way when we make cvs we we put all the experience in the language that it was produced in so in some cases we have used five six seven languages in the same cv please yes. i was quite sure that i was going to receive this answer so first of all we have uh, already 22 languages in the existing npts of esco so First of all, we can filter the NPTs that come from WordNet, and we can give them for possible translations to be the official NPTs of uh, the ESCO taxonomy. That's one part. The second part is that for those languages that WordNet already uh, supports, we will start possibly doing some multilinguality checks on at least French, German, Spanish, Italian, that we know that WordNet actively, officially supports through Princeton communities. Now, uh, there are more than these four languages already in WordNet, but again, multilinguality, I think it's the next step, basically. Very good, we have two questions down here. Sir, if you could give your question. Uh, thanks, I, I won't stand up if you don't mind, because I'll knock something over. Um, David Hunter from the, the ILO in the Department of Statistics but I also have expensive, extensive experience at national level in the design of occupation coding indexes for censuses and surveys. And that's the, the I'm, I guess I'm coming back to this issue of the specific meaning of terms in an occupational concept, context and of the combination of terms. Um, so I, I would, I guess, stress the comments made by two previous speakers about the need for caution in, in looking at, um, at lists of synonyms. But I would also suggest that the indexes used by national statistical officers for coding censuses and coding surveys as a useful source of information. And also for verification to make sure that the statistical office and in your own activities, you're actually making consistent judgments about where a particular occupation title might belong in, within ESCO or within ISCO. Thanks. Please, Gert. Um, I just wondered what's your, you know, uh, the tool the best, um, the, the WordNet, what's your estimate on um, the number of languages expanding in WordNet? Because otherwise we will get the kind of uh, a fork, eh? we will get CVs that can be matched very well because they exist in WordNet and others that can't be matched because they don't exist in WordNet. Is there, is there a growth path that um, uh, supports the, the, the broad policy of ESCO, or, or what's your estimate? I will. Hang on a second, and we have one more question there at the back. 
will forget the first. Um, my name is Lena Ahrens, and I'm uh, coming from Germany, working for the um, Federal Ministry of Education. Um, and Peter Thiele uh, already mentioned uh, this morning um, that um, we're planning um, an international cooperative study in the sector of vocational education and training. And um, four years ago, we were doing a similar exercise, um, comparing um, well selected occupational profiles um, in four occupational areas. And I was um, the coordinator of this exercise, uh, so I know um, some of the problems we've had in the in the groups, in the occupational groups. And my question to you is, um, how do you? Um, um, solve the problem of different cultural um, understanding of certain tasks. This is um, a step further than just the semantic meaning because in all different countries people um, have different ideas and different concepts of certain tasks. So um, this is one question and another question is um, how do you, um, do, you, do you have a double check for, um, which is called linguistic quality control, which is usually done in PISA and, and all, the, um, lot, all the big um, studies, international studies. So do you have um, something to um, really um, reassure that it's correctly translated? Thank you. Please. Shall I? Shall yes, I start? absolutely. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, ladies first, I will start with, uh, um, basically, the demo, this application is um, fresh and uh, something new within ESCO. So, the um, official, let's say, translation or the official use of WordNet is something that needs to be discussed with you as maintenance committee or with the board. Uh, WordNet already has quite a lot of active groups and should there be a decision that we need to further use WordNet, then the discussion falls into assessing officially the active communities and the quality. Um, control for us is an algorithm. So quality control regarding uh, computer science or IT systems falls down to preparing some algorithms. There are quite a lot of them, um, linguistic, basically, because natural language processing techniques has to do with linguistics. So the answer is yes. We will, if there is, according, if there is um, a decision that we should possibly go towards this direction, yes, not only semantic distance algorithms, but also pure linguistics, uh, controlled algorithms for tokenizing and also now, regarding the cultural thing among countries, um, well, this is a very big discussion, but what, what I can uh, easily say is that a machine, a computer, cannot learn in one minute the differences and the deltas and the differences between countries. But there is, um, again, a discipline, a field that completely relates to natural language processing technique, which is called pattern recognition or even machine learning. Therefore, the more you feed up, let's say, a computer, the more reasoning and inference it can make. So the more information you give into indexes and databases, the more possibly difference can be identified. Well, it's quite ambitious, but in some cases it works. And as I always say to myself, according to Emmanuel Kant's Vienna logic, the world is full of complexity, so simplify. And we try to be pragmatic and simplistic as much as possible. Regarding the um, double check, um, the data that such a system is being fed up is like plug in, plug out. So for example, tomorrow we are going at least for six minutes, I'm going to introduce you into the world of open data on how you can unlock your data. So if all the national classifications or the pools of skills competencies of all ESCO pillars are unlocked, not provided as open data, this is another discussion, but there is a decision that we can plug them, for example, and take LinkedIn out, the technology is there. So it is a matter of plugging in and plugging out data coming from sources. Because, as I said, it's better to have a lot of data than to have no data. 
and the most important of it all is it's better to have systems running and algorithms doing their work and then optimize, further optimize them. Very good. That brings us to the end of this session. Thank you very much. Big round of applause, please, ladies and gentlemen.